Having the ability to influence decisions separates the leaders in business from the rest. Getting others to accept our suggestions and recommendations is not easy. Everyone is so much more opinionated and skeptical today. We need a smooth way into their mindset, which will allow us to persuade them to follow our advice. The ancient art of storytelling is one powerful way to get others on board with what we say should happen. It sounds like a snap, but it isn't. And very few business leaders spend the time needed to master this key ability. That is a shame, and shame on them for not learning such a fundamental communication skill. Welcome back to this weekly edition every Tuesday of the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. I'm your host, Dr. Greg Story, President of Dale Carnegie Training here in Japan, and we are bringing the show to you from our High Impact Performance Center in Akasaka in Minato-ku, the business center of Tokyo. Well, where is this cutting edge I speak of for all of us? The quality of our people is the cutting edge for success in Japan. In this show, I will stimulate your thinking about ramping up your business, bring you insights from the best training organization on the planet, provide you with the highest quality Japan information, motivate you to motivate yourself and motivate those around you and help you to shoot the lights out at results time. I don't want you just to succeed in your business. I want to help you to dominate. Before we get into this week's topic, here is what caught my attention lately. Japan's education system may start changing. Currently, it focuses on memorization skills and rote learning rather than critical thinking and proactive participatory learning. To date, this has been good enough because manufacturing industries needed you know, uniformity and quality control labor for their production processes. The program for International Student Assessment, PISA, PISA, shows 15-year-old Japanese ranked top in academic performances. At the adult level of learning problem-solving skills in Japanese technology environments, Japan is barely at the OECD average. Japan went through a stage of reducing memorization components of education encouraging creativity and thinking skills called yutori or relaxed education. The PISA scores fell rapidly. Everyone panicked and rushed back to focus on rote learning. If the change needed more time, it wasn't given it. Interestingly, today in the West, companies need people with better capabilities in interpersonal and communication skills, an ability to uh, deal with content, with new information, solve unstructured problems, working in multicultural and international environments. To this end, PISA is going to start assessing global competence as well as core academic skills. The Japanese government is yet to announce whether they will participate in this new survey. If they do, Japan will get killed in these new scores, without a doubt. Let's see if they are up to the challenge. This is episode number 18, and we are talking about storytelling is a winner. Sore de wa ikimashou. Let's get going. Best intentions 
higher callings, righteousness, all good stuff. But without good communication skills, our efforts fail. Instinctively, we all know storytelling is a great communication tool, but the word itself is a problem. We associate it with bedtime stories and therefore the idea sounds a bit childish. In the modern era, Hollywood talks about the arc of a story or in the political world, the media punishes the lack of a narrative. Actually, this is storytelling but dressed up in more formal clothing. The other problem with storytelling is that we're not very good at it. It is too simple. So we gravitate to more complex solutions, frameworks, theories, models, four box quadrants, pyramids, Venn diagrams, anything to appear more convoluted and pseudo intellectual. If we present something complex, we must be smart. On the other hand, anyone can tell a story. Ah, but can they? How many really good stories have you heard told in business lately? Have you been captured by the speaker as they have taken you into a story that has you emotionally and logically involved? In my observation, business people are usually poor communicators. To ensure they never improve, they are invariably uninterested in childish solutions like becoming a great storyteller. No matter what industry we are in, we have four main business communication objectives. It might be to increase credibility for our organisation. It might be to inform an audience of some pertinent information. It might be to move people or it might just be for entertainment purposes. If we are to have influence with others, that means having them do the thing we recommend. Storytelling focuses on moving people to action. We might tell this story from the point of view of our own experience in the first person, or we may refer to the adventures of someone else told in the third person. Once we have our audience join us inside the story, they are automatically set on a path to an outcome we believe is best for them. The trick is how to get them to join us inside that story. Here are five steps which we need to follow to take our audience with us on the journey we advocate. Step one, we begin by clarifying the why it matters. The story draws out the immediacy and relevance for the audience of the problem or issue. This is a critical step because everyone is surfing through hundreds of emails, Facebook, Twitter posts, LinkedIn, updates, Instagram, Snapchat, messaging, you name it. They are dealing with family, work and financial health issues. There is a tremendous competition for the mind space of our audience and we have to smash through to be heard. If we don't have a powerful why, game over right there. This means the start of the story is vital. We have to get them straight into solution mode once they hear the issue around the why. We are problem solving creatures. So we easily slip into fix mode. There is one caveat, however. We must be aware of, and that is, the why has to be seriously big or no one will care enough to get involved. Step two is to tell them the what, the information they need to know which they don't already have or have not focused on sufficiently. We can't keep up with all the data floating around these days. We are awash with information. We need to bring forth data or perspectives which are pertinent, immediate and grip the attention of our audience. When you find out something very serious is happening, 
and we didn't know about it, we are relieved and concerned at the same time. We are glad we now know, but we are worried about what we need to do about it. To have credibility, we need to be imparting key points linked with evidence. This is essential because we are all card-carrying sceptics today. There is so much false information floating around, fake news. We are permanently on guard against feeling cheated or foolish. We must communicate to the audience what they need to do to overcome the problem we have highlighted. This might be our own recommendation or we may relay that of the third person in the story. Find out all about how to do that in step three when we come back from the break. If you want to become a fully competent and confident presenter, then do the high impact presentations course. We are all being judged when we speak, be it in the internal team meeting or in a public environment, be it the big bosses, clients, or an industry audience. Everyone is evaluating us. Don't blow it. Get the best training on the planet. Do the high impact presentations course now in either Japanese or English. Welcome back. Step three. Having isolated out the issue, imparted some evidence to provide more compelling reasons to take this issue seriously, we now tell the how to move forward. This will explain in some detail what needs to be done so that the listener can take action immediately. This needs to be practical, logical, and within the scope of the listener. When complex solutions are needed, then breaking them down to bite-sized pieces makes their completion more inviting. Step four, to deal with any potential doubts or concerns, we tackle them head on by exploring the what ifs. Every high level sports team go through their what ifs for potential major problems before they compete. They do not allow failures in logistics, timing, problems, health issues, etc., to impact their primed mental state to impede high level performance. Doing the same makes a lot of sense. We join the listener in the conversation going on in their mind about the fears they might have about what is being suggested by us. We don't dodge the difficult issues or problems. We tackle them head on. We address these inside the story so that there are no longer any barriers to the listener taking action. Finally, in step five, we repeat the action steps we recommend succinctly and clearly so they stay fresh in the mind. Compressing the steps into numbers like three, five, or seven work best as they tend to be easily recalled. For example, action recommendations like the 15 steps to engaging employees are always trouble because few people can hold 15 data points in their head. Let's keep it short, keep it memorable, Outlining the next steps makes it easier for the listener to calculate how to integrate what we are suggesting into what they are already doing. The action steps create a type of ready road map for them to follow. If we want to influence, we want people to do what we recommend, then in that case, we need to make the steps clear and infinitely possible. Wrapping up of this in a story works well because people can easily access and remember it. Our job is to become really skilled at the storytelling part. If we can do this, our ability to have influence with others will skyrocket. And as business leaders, that is what we want, isn't it? Keep pushing hard with us here 
at the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. Subscribe on YouTube. Share it with your family, friends and colleagues. Become a regular. Thank you for watching and remember to hit the subscribe button. Our website details are on screen now, japan.dalecarnegie.com. It is an awesome value site, so check it out. In episode 19, we are talking about the ideal sales ecosystem. Find out how we can create that next week. So, yoroshiku, onegai itashimasu. Please join me for the next episode of the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. Until then, create seriously massive levels of success. We are here to help you do that. Dale Carnegie Training Japan has only one direction in mind for you and your business, and that is up.